I've animated hundreds of maps over the past few years, and I found that these six tips, which you can start using today, will really bring your maps to the next level. Tip number one is keep it moving. Now this can be in relation to the actual map moving or specific labels and elements that are on the map. One of the easiest ways to do this is to play around with the speed graph in the graph editor view. So let's say you're doing a simple map, zoom and move here. I'm gonna grab both the zoom, the latitude and the longitude keyframes here. I'm gonna open up the graph editor and then I'm gonna start to move around these Bezier handles here. And I can drag out these keyframes further to keep my movement going and just make sure that all the speed is in a specific area, whether that's at the beginning or at the end. And you could do this pretty easily with your speed graph. Now, if you're working with a much longer animation that's a lot more dynamic and you have different things going on, you can always just add a subtle bearing or a pitch animation to your map and have it loop throughout the duration of your timeline. I like to just add two simple keyframes and then do like a loop out ping pong expression on a bearing or a pitch so that your map will just constantly and subtly move throughout the duration of your entire timeline. If you want to dive deeper on this topic, check out the other two tutorials that I linked down in the video description. Tip number two, limit your color palette. I always find that the more colors I add to my map, the harder it is to make it look good. But I like to keep my palette to two colors or less. And the majority of the times, I'm desaturating the backgrounds and just having like subtle pops of color uh, for my map elements. And you can really control this via your shape layer style presets. So you can find them in the top right of the geo layers panel up here. And there are a number of different ways that you can generate new presets. You can import an Adobe Swatch Exchange file, for example. So let's say you create a specific palette over on Adobe Color. You can download that as an Adobe Swatch Exchange and then import that directly in here. And it will create a whole preset library for you. So it'll create that palette in polygon shades, also in lines and points. So then you can quickly apply these to your map features no matter what the geometry type is. Tip number three, utilize 3D. So Adobe keeps introducing new 3D features to After Effects and just at the beginning of 2025, GeoLayers created a new feature that allows you to create 3D scenes inside of a map comp. What this allows you to do is you can create a map comp that generates a camera and then you can switch it to whatever 3D renderer you want and it will match the movements of your map view. So you can throw all of your 3D elements, whether that's 3D objects or you can throw particles in there and get some cool 3D particle effects that will match the movement of your particular map view. So it's really cool because you're essentially combining different 3D renderers. So your main containing comp can be using the classic 3D renderer, while your pre-comps here can be using advanced 3D. So you can have real 3D models inside of your map here in these pre-comps. Again, I have two other tutorials that do a deeper dive into this. If you want to check those out, everything is going to be linked down in the video description. Next tip, isolate an area. So this is one of the fastest ways to make your map look way better. Just isolate a specific area. So one of my favorite ways to do this is a combination of adjustment layers with track mats. So what you can do is you can draw out any of your map features here using a solid fill, then add an adjustment layer and add something like a hue saturation effect to your adjustment layer. Then you can assign the track mat to your adjustment layer and invert it. And this will give you total control over everything except for that element. So then I can take that hue saturation and just turn down the saturation, which is going to bring down the saturation of everything aside from that specific area of my track mat. So you can not only use this for like countries, but if you can you know, merge different country map features together, then you can isolate specific areas with this particular technique. And if you wanna go even more complex and dynamic, you can add multiple map comps, link them all together, and then start to use custom track mats. But this adds a lot of extra layers and will just up your render time as well. Tip number five, create custom labels. So I just put out like a 20 minute video that is a masterclass in creating custom label templates for geo layers and it didn't do too well and I feel like a lot of people might find labels to be boring but they are so important and they are so powerful and they're actually quite simple to create. All you have to do is create your own composition and drag it and drop it into the label template subfolder in the geo layers items folder in your project panel. This will instantly add the composition 
as a label template. It will show up in your drop down menu. So you can play around with different looks and play around with drawing them out and you can totally customize and control how those labels will react on your map. You just need to put a little time into the design of these and look at how they are going to look at different zoom levels. But once you get those created, you'll have a library of your own custom label templates that you can just use over and over again on your projects. So really invest the time up front to create your own custom label templates. Again, go check out that video that I put together. It's called Master Geo Layers Labeling, eight pro tips for better maps. Last but not least, use the scripts in the GeoLayers 3 panel. So this little button right here will open up the different scripts here. They're all really, really helpful. So play around with these, see what they do and use them. One, for example, is called Blend. This just very quickly adds an opacity transition to all your layers. So that compared to manually keyframing all of your layers, it's really, really great. You can also stagger your layers. You can quickly add repeating lines. You can make your different elements blink. These will not only make your map look better, but they're gonna speed up your workflow in a variety of different ways. Okay, one final last bonus tip. If you wanna master the art of GeoLayers and animating maps, you're gonna to wanna to check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass. And since you lasted this far in the video, I'm gonna give you a special discount. If you use coupon code Boone at checkout, you're gonna save $100 on either of my two courses, or you can save $50 on the bundle deal. Everything is linked down in the video description. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.